Good evening. Merry Christmas Eve to all of you. And though we might all be in our different homes, we remember that Christmas is the time when Jesus came to this world and he is called Emmanuel, God with us. And so I pray that God meets powerfully with all of us in our church community and all those who are watching tonight as we celebrate the birth of our Savior. Let's pray. Jesus, I thank you for this evening. Lord, I pray that people that we would meet powerfully with you this evening. Lord, I pray that you would come by the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, that we would celebrate the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Glory of God, your splendor shines from a manger in Bethlehem, where the light of the world is humbly born into the darkness of human night. Open our eyes to Christ's presence in the shadows of our world, so that we, like him, may become beacons of your hope and love. Amen. We will now have our lighting of the Advent candles.
Please join me for our responsive reading. During our Advent journey, we've anticipated the coming Savior. Join to the world, the Lord has come. We've anticipated the one who is called Wonderful Counselor. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. We've anticipated the one who is called Mighty God. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. We've anticipated the one who is called Prince of Peace. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. We've anticipated the one who is called Everlasting Father. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Tonight, our waiting is over as we celebrate the one who is Emmanuel, our God, who is with us. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Good evening. The first lesson comes from Isaiah chapter 9, beginning with the second verse. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled, rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will call, be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord Almighty mighty will accomplish this. The words of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read together from Psalm 96. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing, Sing to, to the, the Lord. Lord. Praise, Praise his, his name. Proclaim, proclaim his salvation, salvation day, day after, after day. day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all peoples. For great, great is the Lord, and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and glory are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, all you families of nations, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. The world is firmly established. It cannot be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad. Let the sea resound and all that is in it. Let the fields be jubilant and everything in them. Let all the trees of the forest sing for joy. Let all creation rejoice before the Lord, for he comes, he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples in his faithfulness. The second reading for tonight is from Titus chapter 2. For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age. While we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. The words of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yeah, let's redo that. For tonight, 
for the children's sermon, we have a special video that we're going to show. It's a lot of fun, and I hope that you enjoy this video courtesy of Saddleback Kids. The story of Christmas, Jesus is born. This is Mary. Hi! You see, Mary was the mother of Jesus, but before that happened, she lived in the town of Nazareth, and she was engaged to marry a man named Joseph. hey -o. Hi, Joseph! Who got it? Mary got pregnant by the power of God. Hey, huh? Joseph didn't understand all this at first, but an angel came and told him to still take Mary as his wife. Yeah, okay. So he did as the angel said. Not long after that, the ruler of the land, Caesar Augustus, wanted to count how many people were in the land. So Caesar Augustus ordered everyone in the land to travel back to their hometowns so that they could be counted. Joseph's hometown was Bethlehem, so Mary and Joseph traveled from Nazareth all the way to Bethlehem. When they arrived in Bethlehem, they looked for a place to stay. Now I'm sorry. Oh, man. But there was no room for them. Uh, what about her? Um, okay. So they stayed in a barn, and while they were there, Mary gave birth to Jesus. Whoa. <laughs> she wrapped him snugly in the strips of cloth. Uh, that'll work. And laid him in a manger. And so the Son of God, the Savior of the world, was born in a barn in Bethlehem. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the second chapter. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that had been taken that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be assigned to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those whom his favor rests. The Gospel of the Lord. I have a special surprise for us this evening. Let me go grab it really quick. This is one gigantic present. And presents are always 
a surprise. And I would love for you to just uh, write into the comment section, what do you think is in this box? What do you think is in this present right here? Hopefully we find a great surprise in this present that I will reveal at the end of the sermon. I myself, I must confess, I'm not a big surprise person. Uh, surprise birthday parties, surprise presents. Um, I'm just not a big surprise person. I think for me, it's, I, it's not that I don't like surprises, it's the process of getting to the surprise. I'm uh, nosy and I also like to be in control. Recently, Amazon Prime, maybe you're, uh, you have an Amazon account, they have what's called a list. And you can write out your list and make it public so all your loved ones already know what to buy you. I love this idea of having a list because when I get to Christmas Day, I will know exactly what I'm going to get. And the hard part is that I still like surprises, it's just I don't like that process up until getting to the surprise because in my mind I'm just like I just want what I want I'm like how could anybody ever pick out anything better than what I could pick out for myself this is my, my, my controlling pro like mindset my process and so I have a really difficult time ask my wife Esther letting go I have ruined just about every surprise that she has tried to throw me she thinks that I'm like MacGyver, right? That I'm like this detective and trying to figure out the plan. I just, I can't ever just sit back and let things happen. I've got real control issues when it comes to surprises. I'd also love you to just type into the comment section, are you a surprise person or do you not like surprises? I love to find out whether people like surprises. That way I kind of can, you know, be a good friend to this person and not surprise anything on the... But surprises can be either good or surprises can be not so good in life. So there are some times when we get a gift where we just think, wow, that is amazing. And sometimes we get a gift and we think, oh, I hope I got a gift receipt with that one. The story of Jesus, who is going to be king and savior of the universe, came as a surprise. Nobody was expecting the Messiah, who was the promised king, to lead God's people to freedom, to come in this way. Nobody expected that God himself would come as a baby. It came as a great shock and a great surprise for everybody. And it was the, Jesus is the greatest gift then, and great, Jesus is the greatest gift now. But also, Jesus came in a very surprising way. I think for Mary and Joseph and a lot of people in our story that we read out today, it came as a very unwanted surprise of circumstances. Jesus, the greatest surprise, came in a very unideal, surprising way. Let me just walk through the story with you because sometimes when we read this story over and over again, we just kind of get used to the story. Let me just break this story down for us because I think it's a little bit shocking when you actually think about this. Mary, who's probably a, you know, a teenager at this time, is engaged to Joseph, okay? And Mary finds out from an angel that she's going to be pregnant by the Holy Spirit. That is surprise number one. Surprise number two might be even more for Joseph all right. Imagine his wife coming to him or his, sorry, his fiance coming to him and saying, hey, I had an angel that said I was going to get pregnant by the Holy Spirit. So I know that we're not married yet, and, um, but I'm going to have a baby. That must have been very, very shocking for Joseph, especially in that day. And in that day, it was a... Um, that was kind of an offense that could have been stoning for a woman. It was, it was just unspeakable that, you know, if somebody had a baby by somebody other than their husband before that they were married, it would have come as an unideal surprise. Yet Joseph, 
he was also told by an angel, and he stuck with Mary. Even in this very surprising way, Joseph stuck by Mary's side. So the next big surprise, and kind of an unideal surprise, is that there is a census going on. And so Joseph, who now lives in Nazareth, is originally from Bethlehem. And because of the census, they had to make the journey back to their hometown. So Nazareth, which is in the north, and uh, Bethlehem, which is in the south, all right, they had to walk about, walk or ride on a donkey for about 100 miles, or just less than 100 miles. And this journey would have taken one to two weeks. And at this point, Mary is heavily pregnant, right? She's heavily pregnant with Jesus. I could not imagine making that journey from Nazareth to Bethlehem with my pregnant wife. Not only that, it's most likely that they had to sleep off the side of the road along the way. Along that journey, they would have had to sleep at the side of the road, which is absolutely crazy to think about. And so they either walked or they rode by a donkey because it probably would have been too much effort to either walk by foot that whole way. So they, maybe they rode by a donkey. We actually don't know for sure. I know that that's also common in a lot of stories, but we don't know for sure. But when they show up at Bethlehem, so has everybody else for the census. And so they look for a place in a hotel room or an inn, and there is just no guest room anywhere for the couple to stay. And so Bethlehem is more packed than ACD weekend in Auburn. There is just no hotel. You know how packed the hotels get around here. There's just nowhere to stay. And so they basically get the worst Airbnb of all time, right? They go into somebody's house, right? Which is the people would have stayed on the second floor. So the first floor was usually kept for animals. Now we don't actually know whether there was any animals or not. I know that's a big spoiler for some of you. There's no evidence of any of that. But this is usually where the animals were kept. And so, um, and it, it's, it's a good thing that they found anything because Mary then soon gives birth to Jesus. And she places him uh, in a manger. After he's born, uh, places him in a manger, which is basically a feeding trough. This is a, a series of unwanted surprises, but the greatest surprise that comes is Jesus. And even through these unideal kind of surprises, and I asked my wife this, and we kind of talked, we were talking about this last night as I was um, kind of talking about our, the sermon for today. And this is not what pregnant women should go through. Pregnant women should be, be putting up their feet, eating chocolate, and getting back massages. This is what I've been told that every pregnant woman should be doing. Not making 100 mile journeys, not sleeping by the side of the road, not staying in a place where animals are meant to be kept. These are all not unideal kind of surprises that they're having to go through. And it's just, a, it's a really hard set of circumstances for them. But the greatest surprise comes at the end, which is the birth of Jesus. This year, has also been a year of unideal surprises. Sometimes we have these unwanted surprises that seem to keep popping up over and over and over again in 2020. And maybe the greatest surprise to me is when I went to the supermarket, I went to the store to buy toilet paper once, and there was no toilet paper to be found. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a very unwanted surprise very unideal un and so but there's this kind of constant kind of surprise or un uh, kind of circumstances and Mary and Joseph also go through these things but they keep faithful in their obedience and their faith to God see they never saw the um, they never lost sight at the end of the story, how the story was going to go. They never lost sight of what God wanted to do in and through them. They knew that they were a part of something that was much bigger than just having a baby 
for themselves. They knew that this baby would become savior of the world. And I think what the amazing thing about with any baby is that when a baby is born and you, you see you hold either a, a, a brand new newborn and they've got that fresh baby smell and there's just so much life and you look at down at this per, and you look down at this little boy or this little girl and you're holding him in your arms for the very first time or you're holding your niece or your nephew or your grandchildren and you just get this sense of hope. You look down at them and, and you think, oh, who are they going, going to be when they grow up? Who could they possibly be? There's just so much untapped potential when you hold a newborn baby. You just think, wow, there is just, the, you know, the sky is the limit with this baby. I can't wait to see them grow up to be an NBA player or an NFL star. Maybe that's all dads, their boys. Not all dads, their boys, but maybe that's just kind of what I thought when Joshua was born. Um, but yeah, could they be president of the United States? Who are they going to grow up to be? There's just so much feeling of hope in this expectation. And that's what the word hope actually means. Hope is this feeling of expectation and desire for a certain thing to happen. And it doesn't matter our circumstances when we hold on to hope. When we have hope in our lives, it can pull us through the darkest of times. Hope is to the soul what oxygen is to our, or to our lungs. Hope is to the soul what oxygen is to the lungs. Hope is not what just keeps us alive, but it helps us to survive and thrive. So it doesn't just keep us alive, but it helps us to thrive. And though Mary and Joseph must have felt great pressure through these unideal situations, through these great surprises, they knew the promise of Jesus was coming. They kept moving forward to the goal of Jesus being born. They knew that something greater was going to be birthed. During Christmas, I love playing games. I love card games. I love, uh, I, I love board games. I love all types of games. But more than just games, and, and I feel like Christmas is a lot of times when a lot of families play games. More than just playing games, though, is I love winning games. Ask my wife again. I am a very sore loser. I like to, if I don't win, I can be very grumpy. And so... Um, I like to make sure that I win a lot of the time. I don't cheat, but I like to win. But nothing is better than, um, there's something that's better than just winning. See, there's this, sometimes there's this time when you've won the game and you have the cards in your hand, but nobody else knows that you've won the game yet until it comes back around and it's your turn again. And it's like, you just can't wait to lay that final co that card. And so there's this kind of this great anticipation as, the, as it kind of goes clockwise around the group until it gets back to your turn. So you can lay that final card and say, I've won. And so there's kind of this great anticipation because you've already know that you've won the game. And that's kind of what our faith is in Jesus is like. Jesus has already defeated death and Satan. He has won the victory over everything on the cross. And so our hope in the promise of Jesus helps us to have, still have great joy and peace in the anticipation of still what is to come in our lives. We know that Jesus has won the victory and that he is making all things new. And like Mary and Joseph, we too can trust in God's promises and that our hope is found in Jesus. At Christmas, we remember when God became flesh and blood and lived among his people. We remember that he came in a very dark time when the whole world, the known world, was dominated and oppressed in the first century Palestine 
by Romans. That they were like slaves in their own country. Jesus entered the muck and the mess of our world. And he came to endure great suffering on our behalf so that we could be free from our sins. The greatest surprises happen at the most surprising times. The light shines brightest in the darkest moments. And when we reach the darkest moments, God seems to always birth something new. And on the first Christmas, we have the greatest hope that was ever birthed. We remember when the infinite became an infant. And the greatest surprise and the greatest present is actually his presence, that God is with us. And so underneath my present, if I lift this off, is actually Mary, Joseph, and our little gift of hope, Jesus, the promise that God came to be with his people. The promise that we're never alone, that anything that we've gone through, Jesus has already gone through as well. We have a God that we can trust. We have a God that has paid the price for all of us. A God, or Jesus, that came and paid the price on the cross so that we could be free to be in a relationship with him. In 2020, I would not be surprised if Jesus does something new in your life. Again, the greatest surprises seem to be coming at surprising times. At the darkest moments of our life, that is when God births something new. And I believe that God wants to birth something new in your life this year. This Christmas, be surprised by hope. Let's pray. Jesus, Lord, I thank you for your gift of your son. Lord, I thank you that you came to this world and lived in the muck and mess of our lives. Lord, that you paid the price on the cross for the forgiveness of sins so that we can be free. Lord, we thank you for the new life and the new hope that you give to us. And Lord, I pray that this Christmas, Lord, the greatest present would be found in the presence of you. So I pray, Lord, that you would come afresh in our Holy, by the power of your Holy Spirit to refresh and renew all of us. And I pray that all of us would know that you are the hope in our lives. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. It came upon the midnight clear. Touch their hearts of gold. Peace on the earth, good will to men from heaven's all gracious King. The world in solemn stillness lay to hear the angels sing. Still through the cloven skies they come with peaceful wings unfurled and still their heavenly music floats through all the weary world and man at war with men hears not the lost song they they bring Hush the noise and cease the strife And hear the angels sing Glory to God in the highest Glory to God evermore Good news, great joy for Breaks 
breaks through the silence. Christ the Savior is born. Jesus the love song of express the core of our faith by reciting the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please join me in a time of confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Please take a moment in silent reflection to say sorry to God. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you, and for his sake God forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, we will now have a further time of prayer together. Jesus, 
Thank you that you love this world so much that you came to be with us. Lord, that you came to identify and be with your people. You are the greatest gift this world could ever receive. You are the greatest surprise that you come and that you live in our lives, that you want a relationship with us, God. We thank you for that, God, and we pray that you would keep the hope in our hearts alive as well. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray for all people around the world. Lord, we pray that they would meet with the Prince of Peace. Lord, I pray that they would know you for those people in the world that don't know you yet, and Lord, that you would reveal yourself to them. Lord, we pray for all Christians that around the world that face physical persecution. Lord, I pray that you would protect them, Lord, that you would provide for them, and that you would bring great peace and joy to them and their families this Christmas. Lord, give them strength to continue to share the good news and the ministry of Jesus. Lord, we also pray for our missionary, Kathleen Lutz. Lord, I pray that you would be with her and help her to continue to share Jesus with the people of Kenya. Lord, in your mercy. God, we give you thanks for all good things, for all that we have and all that we are. We give you thanks for our family, for our church, for our friends, for all good gifts. Now, please take a moment to either type into the chat of your thanksgivings or lift your thanksgivings to the Lord with your voice. Lord, I thank you for my family. Lord, for my friends. I thank you for our house. Lord, I thank you for Joshua. I thank you for our healthy baby on the way. Lord, I thank you for this church. I thank you for our members. Thank you for even the people that aren't here yet, God. Lord, we thank you for all good gifts. Lord, we thank you, especially this Christmas, for our preschool. Lord, I thank you for Miss Linda and our team. Lord, we thank you for all the ministries and mission that is happening here at the church. Lord, we pray that you would continue just to increase that. And Lord, I pray that you would help us to continue to, to share our faith and help us to be bold in doing that. Lord, in your mercy. God, we pray for our church family. We pray for those in our church family and those connected to our church family. Lord, we lift up now in, for whom that we pray, now both in our hearts and with one voice. Those who don't know you yet, Lord, I pray that you come and you put the love in their heart. Lord, I pray for those who don't have peace or provision this Christmas. I pray you forgive them. Lord, we pray for our schools, for our teachers, and for our students. Lord, we pray for all first responders, doctors, nurses, and anybody else on the front front lines during this time. Anybody who's working with people, God, I Lord, I pray that you would keep them safe and keep their families safe. Lord, we also pray for people in the nursing home or assisted living. Lord, we also pray for our shut-ins. Lord, I pray for safety over them. And Lord, I pray that you would be with them this Christmas. Lord, may your peace and joy reign in their hearts. Lord, in your mercy. God, we pray that you would help us to reach those who do not know you yet in Northeast Indiana. Lord, we pray that you would help us to grow as a church. Lord, we pray that you would light our hearts on fire by the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, that we may do your work and that you would transform us from the inside out. Help us to be bold in sharing our faith and meeting the needs of our community. And Lord, we pray all of this would be to build your kingdom, that your will would be done, and that Jesus' name would be lifted high. And all God's people said, Amen. Church, the peace of the Lord be with you. Let's take time to share peace with one another that we're with or give us a big wave online.
together. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give, give thanks, thanks and praise. It is right, it is indeed right, our duty and our joy that we should at all times and all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. And so, with the choirs of angels, the, with the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Oh. in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us now pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 
These are the gifts from God for the people of God. Join us as we sing Lamb of God. Church, the body of Christ given for you. And the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Almighty God, you gave your son both as a sacrifice for sin and a model of the godly life. Enable us to receive him always with thanksgiving and to conform our lives to his. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now comes to the part of uh, the service, which is my favorite part of our Christmas Eve service, is the, the lighting of the candle. So go ahead and get your candles ready at home. Go and turn off the lights. And uh, I'm going to light the candle, the first candle, and uh, pass it to our choir uh, as we all sing Silent Night together.
Just a few announcements before uh, we end our service today. A, a few ways that you can continue to connect into our church family is that we have a worship service again on Sunday the 27th at 9.30 a.m. So you can choose. You can either watch it live or maybe if you're spending time with family or you want to sleep in, you know, it's Christmas time. I think Jesus allows it. And so you can, can, you can watch that later on. But I encourage you just to keep connecting with our church family over this Christmas season. The last announcement is that we are going to be going through a book called Gaining by Losing. It's by J.D. Greer, and that's what the book that we're going to be kind of themed on for the next year as we look at our vision of Multiply. And so this book called Gaining by Losing, we're going to do uh, several sermons uh, based on the text of that book. And so that will kind of be a part of our teaching spirit, our, our teaching series in the future. So again, that book's called Gaining by Losing by J.D. Greer. So maybe you want to order a copy and be able to have a read through that over your Christmas season. All right, and now time for the blessing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen, and have a fantastic Christmas. Christmas.